Business process re-engineering is about creating value, company value and business value. And that's the focus of today's conversation is to put BPR in the right context right, to be able to successfully execute or move forward with the BPR initiative. Now, I've been doing business transformation for many, many years across about every industry, vertical and industry you can imagine. And there is, regardless of whether it's telecommunications or it's manufacturing or whether it's aerospace or, or media or government or insurance or utilities, you name it, there are some underlying key patterns in moving forward with BPR that I think it's important to share with you today to, to help you move forward. I think that we need to start with the distinction between business process re-engineering, BPR, and business process management, BPM. They're both important, and actually I wouldn't say there's so much a distinction as much as there's a continuum. A business process management is really ongoing incremental operational improvement, right? Every day, all day, every year, every week, we're looking for opportunities to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of our processes. Maybe we're leaning out a little bit of waste over here. Maybe we're improving you know, some customer value here. Maybe improving the quality of the product or customer service. But ongoing incremental improvement, very important. Now, business process re-engineering, moving to the other end of the spectrum, is transformational in nature. It moves the needle on how we engage our business platform, the people, the processes, the technology. It fundamentally changes in many cases how we operate and how our business processes operate. And BPR is typically in response to changes in business strategies. Whether we're pursuing a red ocean strategy, a blue ocean strategy, uh, uh, some inflection points that we'll talk about in just a little bit. But BPR is generally engaged as part of changes in strategy. Now, regardless though, it's about creating customer and business value. You know, really, we're asking the question, what does the customer really want from our products and services? The business value says, how can we deliver that, provide that in the most economical way? How do we be very efficient in creating that customer value? Because if we get the customer value proposition right, and we can be very uh, efficient in delivering that customer value, right, then we can earn a profit from that, and that makes the whole organization sustainable. So the real objective of BPR is to create a high-performing business platform. Now, when I say business platform, I'm really talking about that, that really underlying operating system fiber of your organization, the people, the processes, the technology, right, that support those strategic objectives. So when I use the word high-performing, what, what am I talking about? Well, we want to be very effective and very efficient in creating value. We talked about value and effective and efficiency just a little while ago. We want to be scalable. As the business grows, particularly if it's growing very quickly, we don't want to just start throwing extra bodies at, to make it work. That platform should be scalable. As we double in size, right, we just incrementally increase maybe the, the staffing. So we're highly scalable. The concept of extensible basically says as the we discover new business requirements, and you're always discovering new business requirements, we can fairly seamlessly snap that into that operating platform of the organization. We want to be agile, right? We want to be able to very quickly make those adjustments, recognize this change in the environment, and adjust accordingly. We want to be robust. Sometimes it's called anti-fragile. We want to make those SLA, service level agreements, all day, every day, regardless of the changes in our business environment. And finally, we want to be transparent. Now, transparent in this particular case means we really understand the operating, high-performing operating platform. The processes are not locked up in people's brains. We have them documented. We know how the technology works. We know how we're delivering value to our particular organization or our customers, really. When do we engage BPR? The concept, I want to say engage BPR, when do we start thinking about actually applying these BPR techniques? Our business environment is very competitive. It's rapidly changing. Always monitoring changes in the environment, the concept of uh, inflection points. Now, Andy Grove, a former uh, CEO of Intel, coined the term strategic inflection points. And the concept of a strategic inflection point basically says that there's been a fundamental change in your organizational environment. And if we don't recognize and quickly respond to that change, we risk going into decline fairly quickly. So, in the spirit of creating value, let me leave you with five BPR best practices to consider going forward. Number one, clearly align your BPR initiative with your business strategy. If you're doing BPR, you've probably made a fundamental shift in business strategy. 
and really BPR is supporting, about supporting that business strategy. So make sure you have great alignment there. Number two, combine BPM with BPR. They're not mutually exclusive. Matter of fact, I would say they're synergistic. Matter of fact, I go one step further. If we continually do a business process in management, ongoing incremental refinement, right, to operate to the business operations, and even be a little more aggressive about it, we can probably create sufficient value, customer value, and organization business value to even fund the BPR part of the initiative. Something to consider there. Number three, get your business, get your IT platform right. It's very difficult to achieve transformational BPR if you don't have the information technology infrastructure to support the kind of things you need in terms of changing the operating platform, the, the people, the processes, and these kinds of things. Number four, start where you are. Start with, start with that current state. Now, the uh, discipline of information technology service management in ITEL, it's one of the core principles, start where you are. And I'm a big advocate of starting, embracing and understanding that current state. Now, a number of pundits in BPR say, well, we don't need to look at the current state. Let's just focus on where we need to go. You've got to embrace that current state. Much of what you're currently doing, even if we do radical transformational re-engineering, conceptually, some of the, many of the underlying business rules and policies and procedural kinds of things will move forward into that future state, albeit we'll probably do it in different ways. It might be through technology, it might be, be a number of different ways, maybe we organize workflows, but you're still gonna have to embrace it and, and move it forward, some, some part of it. Right. And number five, just get started. It's just that simple. So we get started on BPR, it's going to be very difficult. You can't get the benefits of BPR until you get started. Just that straightforward. It's a journey. Go ahead and start that journey. I enjoyed having this conversation with you this morning. And if you'd like to talk about BPR in more detail, talk about your organization, talk about how to engage uh, BPR and uh, make it successful in your organization, just reach out anytime. I look forward to talking to you.